Hey guys, it's Andrew here from Great Vax, and today we're going to show you a troubleshooting video on how to fix the red light problem on your Rainbow E Series 2 speed vacuum. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is always make sure the vacuum cleaner is unplugged and the power switch is turned off. Always do that before you start working on the vacuum. Um, what you're going to want to do is you want to gather these four components up. Any of these four components could be the reason why the vacuum cleaner is not turning on it and you're getting that red light. So get your canister, the main ones, the power nozzle, and the main electrical hose and then we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and get started guys. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to want to check when diagnosing why this red light is turning on and your vacuum is not. The first thing you want to do is take the main power hose and make sure that it's connecting to the vacuum properly. Now if there's anything blocking these prongs right here, if they're bent, anything's blocking them, anything like that, it's going to cause a bad connection and the vacuum light is probably going to turn on because of that. Also if you see these two gray tabs here on the hose, these latches latch the hose to the vacuum cleaner. So if any of these tabs are broken or damaged, that could also cause a bad connection and cause this light to turn on. So. When you plug this hose in, you're going to want to lift up this little flap here and that opens up the electrical port for the hose to plug into. Go ahead and insert the hose and you're going to want to firmly press the hose into place and you should see this gray tab and that gray tab lock into place and you'll probably hear it lock into place as well. So firmly press the hose in and put firm pressure to one side and then the other as you're pushing the hose on to ensure that these tabs lock into place. So if everything connects correctly and this hose isn't fitting loose or anything like that or it's not trying to pop out, then the problem is probably not this end of the hose and we can go ahead and uh, troubleshoot the end of, other end of the hose right now. This is going to be the most commonly seen reason why that red light turns on. It's simply just because you have the trigger lock engaged. So on this hose, there's a lock mechanism up here. If you have it all the way down, it locks the trigger into the on position. If you have it all the way up, it locks the trigger from being pulled at all. If you keep it neutral, that you can turn the trigger on and off just like this. So if you're trying to turn the vacuum cleaner on and you have this trigger lock turned on, it's not going to turn on and the red light will come on. So make sure that the trigger locks in the neutral position. You can easily tell if it's in neutral because you're allowed to move the trigger on and off just like this. Um, so as long as it's in neutral position while you're trying to turn the vacuum cleaner on, then you shouldn't get the red light. So that's just another good thing to check. One more thing to check out on this, you guys. See these two slots here and here? Um, that's what these gray latches latch into on the hose. So if these appear to be damaged or broken, that could be part of the problem. If they do look broken, go ahead and uh, send us an email at service at greatvax.com. You could even send a picture of that. That would help out quite a bit and we could help diagnose that for you. If that's the problem, we could help you get that fixed. If they appear to look okay and nothing's damaged, then uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the rest of the troubleshooting. Alright guys, so now it's time to check the other end of the electrical hose. Take this end of the electrical hose, inspect it for damage, make sure that this is round and not ovalized or anything like that. Make sure that you have this button lock sticking out and that it's working properly. Also check the electrical connection, make sure there's no dirt, debris, or moisture on it. If all that looks good, then grab your wands and do the same. Check all the electrical connections, make sure the prongs aren't bent, make sure nothing's ovalized or bent as far as the wand goes, and check both ends of that as well because you have electrical connections on both ends of the wand. So if everything looks good there, insert the wand. You should hear that click sound, so the button lock, you know the button lock engaged there, and as long as everything's attached firmly and not having any excessive play or anything like that, then you should be good to go. Um, once you've established a good connection on this end, grab your other wand, the second half of it, and same thing, you've got a button lock here, you've got electrical connections on both ends of all the wands, so check those out, make sure everything's good to go. Insert the wands, you should hear them click into place like that. If you've got a good firm fit, then this probably isn't the problem and we can go ahead and move on to the next step. Alright, so we've got one more connection to check and that connection is going to be on the power nozzle here. So on your power nozzle you've got this pivot piece and that's what the wand locks into. Um, you've got a hole right here so the button lock on the wand can engage this hole and lock it into place. 
And then you also have this electrical connection. Um, again, with the other electrical connections, you're gonna check these prongs, make sure they're not bent, make sure there's no dirt and debris, and make sure there's no moisture in them. Um, and then just any other damage that you might see on here, you know, pay attention to that and see if you can find anything. If everything looks good, then go ahead and take your wands that we've got connected to our hose now. And with these wands, you've got the button lock here and another electrical connection that we explained earlier. Make sure you line all that up with the pivot and it should lock into place just like that. So you've got your button lock from the wand that is engaged into that hole right there, so you know that's good to go. There's no gaps or anything right here, so you know it's inserted down all the way. Um, if you've got a good, strong connection like that, then you're all good to go and there's no problems here. If it's loose, doesn't want to fit right, you're seeing that that button lock's not engaging, um, this could be the problem. If that's the case, go ahead and send us an email at service at greatvax.com. We can help you troubleshoot it a little bit more to make sure that that's it. Um, but that's pretty much going to be it as far as your connections go. If all this stuff looks good and everything's nice and tight fitment, um, then we'll go ahead and move on to the next step, which is checking out the power nozzle here. So this is the main power nozzle of the vacuum. Um, to make it a little bit easier to work on, and go ahead and disconnect these wands. And uh, so now with the power nozzle, there's a few things you're going to want to check. If you're getting the red light on the canister and you've checked all those connections, this is the last thing that you're going to want to check out. So on the power nozzle here, you've got the brush roll and you've got these brushes on the sides here that also spin. Um, if you see any blockage in here at all, you like a lot of times you might see a sock wrapped around here or the brush roll has an excessive amount of hair wrapped around it. Um, that could be the issue as well. If anything's blocking this and keeping it from freely spinning, it's gonna cause that red light to turn on. So check this out. Make sure there's nothing blocking it that's obvious. And then go ahead and spin it with your hand. If it spins freely like this, then everything should be good to go and you shouldn't have any problems with the power nozzle either. All right guys, so once you've visually checked and spun this brush roll by hand to make sure there's no blockage or anything wrapped around the brush roll, it'd probably be a good idea to go ahead and take the cover plate off the bottom and uh, check it out in a little bit more detail just to make sure there's nothing there blocking it or preventing it from spinning. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is there's this gray little twist screw right here. You're gonna wanna turn it and unlock it. Once you do that, you've got the two tabs here here and here, and then there's two here, right here and right here. You just fold these to the sides this way, out of the way, and while you do that, push this little tab to the side and then pull up on the plate. You can see it kind of lifting up on the side here. And then go ahead and do that with the other side over here. Pull the tab to the side, pull up on the plate a little bit, and that'll release the pressure from these two tabs. Now you can just take these two tabs and pull them and just pull the plate up towards you and just pull it up and off and it'll come right off. And then once you get in there, you can see the belt right here. You can see the motor, the brush roll, the suction tube. Um, there's no blockage anywhere. This is nice and free and clear. The belt and brush rolls spin freely. There's no issues there. There's nothing caught on the belt or the brush roll. So everything looks good in here. If you do have hair wrapped around the belt or any debris or anything on the belt or brush roll, um, go ahead and clear that out and then try to turn the vacuum on again and see if you still have the red light. If everything looks nice and clear, go ahead and put the cover plate back on. Just snaps on nice and easy like that. And then don't forget to turn the lock screw back into place by turning it uh, clockwise. Um, so now that we've checked that all out, there's no blockage or anything like that. We're gonna go ahead and just turn the power head on and uh, see if we notice anything else. All right, guys, so we've got everything hooked up. We've got the power nozzle, the hose, and the wands. Everything's hooked up, ready to go. Um, we've now got the vacuum plugged in, so now that you got your vacuum plugged in, just make sure to be careful. Keep your hands and everything clear of this area of the power nozzle and anything underneath it. Um, so now we're just gonna go ahead and turn it on, see if the power nozzle's spinning correctly and working correctly, and we'll go from there. All right guys, so as you can see, the power nozzle's working just fine, the side brushes are spinning, the brush roll's spinning just fine, um, there's no issues at all. Um, if you guys are still having issues with the red light being on or your vacuum's not turning on at all, 
um, go ahead and shoot us an email at service at greatvax.com and we'll help you troubleshoot it even further. But if you guys follow all these steps and you check everything out, um, you guys should be able to go ahead and get this problem fixed on your own, no problem. If you're still having trouble getting your Rainbow E-Series to turn on, go ahead and click the link in the top right corner for another video that we have that shows you a lot of good tips and tricks to get your Rainbow E-Series to work. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you have any questions or comments about it, feel free to comment below. And also if you're looking to buy any parts or supplies or upgrade your current Rainbow to a newer model with a 5 year warranty, click below and get you all taken care of. And don't forget guys, like this video and subscribe to our channel.